There we go. 11 packages, a couple totes, a couple big ones, a couple not done and not shown. That's sort of how it goes today on The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. <laughs> Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers, dealer and Elizabeth <clears throat> with the Crazy Picker Life Thursday edition, late starting edition, 2.48 in the afternoon, p.m. edition. Working hard today to get all my 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there plus school, all the knick-knack, paddy-whack, get all that stuff done and out of the way. So maybe by, say, 8.30 tonight, 8.30 p.m., I can get a couple hour block and another couple hour block into sorting the basement. I've done a little more work down there, but uh, Lots of 15 minute things, lots of distractions, lots of schoolwork. Got out for a short run, all that stuff. I want to get down to business down there and I don't want to do it for 15 minutes at a time if I don't have to because I don't want to leave a huge mess. I want to get a bunch done, pack up a little bit. Get a bunch done, pack up a little bit. And I've, th I've been thinking about this sort and sometimes I don't have all the answers why I'm doing something but it's rolling around in my head and I guess uh, the process of putting it out here on the vlog actually helps me think it through articulating it here on the vlog I, I don't know uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the process of talking it through to myself and talking to myself, I think this vlog is a, an extension of that process. Good, bad, or ugly, I know, I know some people appreciate the thoughts that get on the vlog. So I had a comment yesterday from somebody who appears to live in or near my boyhood hometown of Janesville, Wisconsin, and uh, they said, I like your videos, but quick, uh, quit all these quick spins and flicking the camera around and all that kind of stuff, it's making me nauseous. <laughs> and I thought about that a little bit, and I understand. There's a couple reasons for my video style, and my video style, I don't know if it's unique, but some people would like to have um, cinematic, you know, videos or at least videos that have good cuts and good pauses and uh, nice visuals and all those kind of things. And some people don't realize that my videos are much closer to a raw cut and a lot of the things that I do during the video help me maintain easy editing and that raw cut. Okay, had to make a quick cut in the video. I got uh, distracted by the cowboy rapper. What did you say about him? He's weird. He's weird. No, you wonder why he talks so much. He's got some... Uh, background disc track going on. He's got a rap going on. I, I've seen him down here before and now I finally figured out what he's doing. He's uh, so always walking around with his shirt off and got a strut and he's uh, he's got his rap going. <laughs> I hope to get him on camera here one of these times now that I see what's going on. First, At first I thought he was just sort of a downtown crazy person. But now I realize he has some sort of talent, so see if I can get him some exposure. He's 
he's always uh, blowing out profanity and all kinds of stuff and kind of seems in his own world but I, I see the I see the rap <laughs> and I'm not saying I like it it's uh, it's interesting at best right so anyway there's always uh, interesting things to see if your eyes are open okay so my video style uh, I can't change it too much for a couple of reasons one when I am whipping my camera around, a lot of times it's to save a break or an edit. Every time I turn off the camera, it's a clip. And every clip is extra work for me. And I don't like to have super messy cuts and clips. I don't like to have to clip the end of the videos. I don't like to uh, have long pauses or anything like that. And so every time I have another clip, if I have to clip the ends at all, or edit, or anything like that, uh, that means I have to watch the whole video, that means I have to clip edges. I don't, I don't want to do that. So part of the reason I whip the camera around, like I'll do like a shot like this, and my screen will be down, and I'll flip my screen up and come back around. Yeah, it can make you dizzy. It makes me dizzy too. <laughs> You get used to it, I guess. Uh, so, I'm able to edit videos faster, easier. Everything's got to be easy about this video because this video, for whatever value it has for me and for you, has to be easy or I can't do it. It's an extra. So, there's the whole editing thing. The other reason that I do some of these flips and flip arounds and things like this is uh, to keep certain things off camera. Sometimes I'm in a, a tight shooting location in my house or wherever and I just don't want to reveal certain rooms or certain things going on or uh, the, you know the outside of my house or like I screwed up before and put my license plate in there <laughs> in the beginning I don't know if I'll blur it out or not not a huge deal but so those are the two reasons and if you combine the two sometimes I'm flipping it around to save and edit and also to keep a tight area tight so I realize my videos are raw. Now let's talk about that for a minute. If you go out picking and you only pick up the best items, you're gonna miss out on picking up some bulk items and when you go through the bulk items, you're gonna find some super jewels. So if you go out there and watch only the polished videos, you're gonna pick up some good items, good, good ideas. But if you go out there and watch some of the raw bulk videos like mine, where certainly there's extra length and it's not all it's not all music intros and it's not all nice zoom in videos and pictures and not all tight subjects and it's not all scripted. You know, if it, if it goes that far you're gonna discover some pretty good jewels in there. So some, some of you know that, but really for me, the way I do these videos, it's out of necessity. Okay, a little bit of a goose chase. I had a person contact me that saw the video about this. They say it's a Nylant, uh, let's see, what did they say? Mobile home, and it shows up, sure enough, pretty rare on the internet. Here's one that's obviously in better condition that sold at auction for $385. And if you look, I have seen these before somewhere. Before. Uh, there's the cab or the truck. And I am now going to go back and see if one of the trucks that was sitting there all busted up is it. Because it could be another $30, $40, $50 bill. Okay, trying to make this uh, trip worth it and, and certainly not trying to bomb my day because I've got schoolwork and, and plenty of other stuff to do. If I didn't think 
that that truck front was down there I would not be going but there were at least four or five beat up metal truck bodies down there and I'd be willing to bet that one of them is it that's why I'm in the car I got uh, my other picking crew along with me it's a little picking adventure yeah and I remember I was talking to the guy down there Wheeler yeah he said he's got uh, an old Argus and some kind of uh, mm, Nikon motor drive no nope. we'll go check it out Rico motor drive ooh I mean, some of those are actually pretty decent. There's one week of motor drive that goes for 35 or 40 bucks. Other than that, they're all pretty much like 15, so I don't know. Oh. Well, it's an old one. It's one good one. And then all it's like a third generation or something. Yeah. He says it works. Yep. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's scraping for nickels or what he's looking for. And Let's I don't know. Look. I don't know what the Argus is all about. Argus usually doesn't mean big bucks, but you never know. Not usually. Well they made some higher-end cameras. So I figure. Three minutes to drive down there. I hope to be down there less than 10 minutes. Three minutes to drive back. That would be 16 minutes. Yep. Let's try to hold ourselves to that because both you and I are busy, busy. Yep. That was anticlimactic. Yeah. A super wild goose chase turned into wild goose chase. Well, <laughs> they're closed on uh, Tuesdays and they must have changed their hours around because now they're closed on. Thursdays as well. Uh oh. And so, um, I'll have to catch it tomorrow. I peeked in there and I saw their pile of stuff that they put out on the sidewalk, which is where this was. And I didn't spot any of the trucks. So they probably would have been taken off first and brought in first, and I might not have just seen them. But uh, they might have went fast too. Yeah, because they were marked cheap. So uh, whew, either way, I think it's 50 bucks now, which is sort of what I thought anyway. 50 bucks plus shipping for the trailer, but I'm pretty sure adding the cab to it. And Wheeler concurs that it'd be 100 bucks plus shipping. Yep, cleanliness is everything. For me, that's worth getting down there and grabbing it if it's still available. So now. You'll have to wait till tomorrow, and I don't think I'll be able to sleep. <laughs> Gosh, I still like this uh, picking thing, right? I like the picking part of it more than anything Thrill else. Thrill of the hunt. Thrill of the hunt. The hunt has been postponed. There's a bowling ball under there. Oh, I'm gonna cover you up, Mr. Bowling Ball. All right, I uh, did some orders ahead. There's one UPS in my office. Ah, oh, there it is. I even added, I even added a blue one along with another green one. So there's 102 over there. Found those somewhere. Time to lay some stuff out. It's about 9:30 p.m. I think I'm going to be going late. I think I got the energy, it's the end of the week, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes things are hard to start. For whatever reason, this is hard to start. I gotta get into it. Okay, I've been, uh, I know why I've been putting this off in the sense. So we went through most of this stuff already. And we divided it initially into somewhat similar boxes, items in somewhat similar boxes, but we did kind of go crazy with that, and then towards the end we just started putting stuff in boxes. So, I'm not sure. <laughs> the second sort that we're gonna do here, I need to get a few more things away from Wheeler so I can list them, because they may never get listed or they're below his listing uh, ability level and I need to get those things out of here I need to get those things listed I've got a whole 10 by 10 by 8 storage unit full of boxes of stuff that will give him and me more stuff than we can handle for months so oh, I'm looking at this and this is three boxes that I just took out three 
three boxes, not even big ones, but three boxes. And you can see uh, just at a glance how much it is. And then, you know, there's a varied amount of things. There's a few lenses there. There's a few light meters here. I've tried to group some things. There's motor drives. There's a bunch of different box-like cameras ranging from something that's, you know, 20 bucks. It's got the nice look on it to these pop out. I'm not even going to do it, but there's colored bellows in there. These are higher end boxy type cameras. Some of these are real intricate and specialized box cameras, maybe from the turn of the century, maybe even earlier. Uh, this one's sort of a hybrid where box cameras started to go into fold out cameras. I mean, there's some neat stuff here. Now that is a battery pack. These are oh, film slides, whatever the heck they're called. Some of these, these have backs on them, Graflex backs. Those go for some money. Some of these are new old stock from the 50s, 40s, 30s. Got some flash units that probably are more desirable. I think we moved those out. We've got some cameras that are all over the map. Uh, as far as value and if they test out they're a lot more valuable uh, just a camera outfit that we haven't necessarily went through but it's a movie camera don't think it has a good lens on it's got all the goodies in there I mean there's you know with the outfit like this it might pay to sell it all together might be fifty to a hundred dollars there might be a couple pieces in there that are good if you part the whole thing out maybe it's closer to a hundred dollars who, who knows I'm not I'm not afraid to list something like that um, I can list any of this stuff I'm not gonna get the same money Wheeler is I'm not gonna test it like he does I'm not gonna describe it and get the keywords on there so ultimately I'm letting him be the boss <laughs> on that and um, in my back pocket, I don't think I mentioned this, part of the, the reason that I'm doing this sort is to determine how much stuff I have left to list and then I'm going to quickly list that and then I'm going to go get some other stuff one way or another. Um, I appreciate camera stuff, but I'd rather be listing something else. So I will, you know, doing the bottom end of the quality of stuff that we get and lotting some stuff up and all that, that's my day job, right? My uh, fun job is finding cool things that I like. So I want to do more of that. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to feed Wheeler the good stuff. I mean, that is, that's what a family business, that's what a tight-knit business uh, will do when you're a business owner and you have certain talents on your team. You feed them what they need to do their best job and that's what I'm doing as this business and grows and evolves and doesn't need me anymore I'm gonna go out and continue to find the stuff that I like and that I make good profit on and stuff that I enjoy uh, and probably have some some fun along the way but uh, you know I've always been willing to do what it takes if I see the mission <laughs> and that's what we're looking at so now I'm bringing Wheeler and we'll get his uh, We'll get his initial reaction on camera and then I got to get down to business of trying to explain to him what we're trying to do here. I don't want to spend a lot of time sorting this. I have a mission to put it in, in those tubs and as you can see I got rid of my film tent even temporarily and uh, there it is. That's a lot. That's a that's a big amount of totes. That's the picture I should have took for the last video, so people can see the massiveness of those totes. Oh my goodness! What are you thinking? Let's go get Wheeler. This video is getting long. There he is. What's your initial reaction? Mm. This is three boxes. Seven out of ten. Wow. Whatever's here, I don't know. I'll have to take a look through it here for a minute. Yeah, you look through it for a minute, and then I'm going to do... It used to be 250 but now they're down to about 100 Oh, is that what that is? And battery charger. Yep, same one I use on my camera. Sometimes I'm missing lens cap for the aerial lens. I guess I'll see what's still unstuck. Probably do. 
Uh, yeah, I think. Before. Did we just list that? I think we still have it. Yeah. Because I think I just put it in the freezer yep. if we just listed it. Big whatever. Yep. I'll hang on to that. I wondered what that was. Yeah. Throw that on there. Yeah, protect so the it. The fitted one with like the notches for the notches on there, so that'll work. Right. I'll have to look at that tomorrow. Boxes here from the 40s and 50s for Graflex. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of, uh, what do you call those? Film slides? Oh, film uh, holders. Film holders. Graflex. Yeah, all yep. those things there. What are those called? Uh, Th those right there. Yeah, film holders. Film holders. Yep. Huh? Okay. These are about the highest end ones right here when they got into the plastic and all that. Let's go regal. Yeah. Be fancy. Fancy. Okay, uh, me and Wheeler are going to get down to business here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that went pretty well. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> it, you know, this is pretty good stuff. He's been, Wheeler's been working with some really good stuff, like A grade, A plus grade. And so when we look at stuff that's like B plus, A minus, like this stuff is, it's what we used to find on our best days. And so it's kind of funny how that works out. So what I did is first separate into two piles all the green totes you see are going to be wheelers and then sorry to make you dizzy i've noticed i've whipped it around <laughs> uh this pile he's gonna let go of so uh film backs got another box camera to work with got a broken fly swatter piece and I've got this a uh, couple cameras that I can lot up. So I may still consult with Wheeler. I'll have to do some, you know, look up on these things and some learning and, and all that's fine. And then the rest of this stuff, it, this is why I need so many totes to do this. I'm trying to put like things with like things. You know, you got an accessory tote. You've got kind of a miscellaneous charger tote. You've got uh, the Yashica mat there. If I can find any buddies like that, I'm going to put them in there. Light meters, lenses, you know, everything that I laid out and talked about when I first looked at this. You know, there's a lone camera. I don't know how many more regular camera bodies like that, SLRs we have. But until I go through everything, I'm going to separate those. These are different. And... I don't know how many of those we have. Point and shoots, different uh, medium high end point and shoots. We've got uh, some half frame cameras. We've got some older film uh, or SLR cameras. So it, uh, it makes more sense to have the same kind of things together. Wheeler's up there, he's got 62 items pictured and he says it's hard because they're there's so many different kinds of items and uh, it's a little more boring to do the same thing for three four days in a row but it definitely is more streamlined and it's the way uh, it's the way we have to do it so I'm gonna put these under the table and out of the way and I'll show you maybe one more cycle or a half cycle the next uh, three or four boxes and this is just gonna be the way it is more or less uh, for the next however long it takes okay quick look at the, the next load here uh, I took another three boxes and totes and stuff out and laid them all out for Wheeler to look at and for me to group I put all the other totes that are pending uh, looking to get full and then priced underneath for the most part and then I made a decision early on it struck me I was starting to mix in a blue tote in there with the green ones uh, green ones are gonna mean Wheeler and then I'm gonna put anything that he'll give me throw me the bones in any other tote and then I don't have to I don't have to question that so some of this, <laughs> some of these things I'm doing are on the fly, and I'm tweaking it as I go and learning as I go, because really, it used to be that Wheeler would list 98% of the camera stuff, and occasionally I would get into a few bigger items that we hadn't been moving quickly enough, and I just latched on and, and tried to get rid of them, or some things for Amazon or whatever. 
and now I'm you know now I've got my hands in the camera stuff and learning some of it and like I said taking care of the low end and less desirable and more laudable stuff um, so this is this is a little bit of an evolution in in the way we're running our business and I'll show you this stuff again and point out a few items from my standpoint that I like but the quality of stuff that we get in is uh, is good it's not we're not buying really we're not buying junk we're just buying stuff that's uh, you know it's not the highest end stuff it's it's medium and some high end stuff so you know mixed in with these cameras are really good ones I like the Canon AE1s and the Pentaxes those are good sellers for 50 bucks or more uh, you know stereo realists I mean there's there's here's a you know Canon TLB with some kind of lens on it that could be really good if it works Nikon stuff's usually pretty good uh, you know just in here there's mixed all kinds of of good stuff and then there's some unknowns a couple graph flexes small ones those are always gosh I don't know if we've ever sold a decent graph flex for less than two hundred dollars so those are always pretty good and then there's specialty graph flexes and pieces off those that are worth good bucks too uh you know another canon a one this one happens to be a 1980 olympics version which adds some money if this is an olympic camera the cap alone it can be 20 bucks that's kind of neat oh what else we got a ones those are always good some unknowns, uh, Kawa 6 has a following, and then some uh, flash triggers or flash release holders, flash holders, whatever. So again, uh, you know, a good, a good wide array of stuff. I'm hoping to get a few of these items out of here that are $25, maybe $30 standalone cameras. And I'm going to lot those up with a few like ones for people that like to collect those and sell them for 15 plus shipping quick, quick, quick and just move them out. And then all the stuff that's 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 dollars, that's the stuff that that we need Wheeler to test and spend time with. So let me get them down here. We'll get another reaction. And then I think uh, I think I'll close out the video and, and get to town here. It's like 10 30 p.m everybody's gonna wonder where's your video dealer i thought you'd go to bed early <laughs> well i still have some steam in my cannon here and tonight's the night to go late uh tomorrow's friday i don't have as much going on or i can you know i go picking a little bit at rummage sales and such so heavy coffee day tomorrow whatever so I, I don't know. I'd like to say I'm going to go till two or three, but I think I'm going to aim at four cycles through and then see where I can get. So let me get Wheeler down here again, interrupt him again. Well, that's all right. We're having vlog wars here. Crazy vlog wars. It's Star Wars, the vlog wars. Huh? Yeah, I got a longer handle on mine. I can go. Oh, man. No longer arm. I've already got everybody dizzy, apparently. Oh, no. So, uh... Good lens. It works right. Works right. Yeah, one of my questions is going to be, Stiff. one of my questions is going to be, should we pull the lenses off the cameras? And my bucks. answer is probably yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of protects the mirror boxes on there, but any of them aren't worth it. Yeah, but we like you to list the cameras separate. So that's the widest list of the day that I said they're going for like 130 from Japan. I was like, dude, what the heck? I'm going to list it up at like 60. <laughs> so overall impression, a couple graph flexes there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a solid one right there, 200 plus. If it works. It's always, it's always if it, G3, it's always if it works. Well, for parts, they're still hundred bucks. Right. They're super desirable right now. And a graph flex. There's two, oh, two wow. of them. Yeah. Cool. So I, I said on camera that it's hard to find a graph flex that's in reasonable condition that's under two hundred bucks. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's very accurate. I mean, we've had some really crappy ones for parts that, or parts chassis that probably go less. Yeah, not even that though. I'm trying to think of what maybe like the Graflex X 
Owl or something. I don't know. There's a couple that aren't quite as desirable, but they're all they're all expensive. Yeah. They're expensive to start with. And, and these are both stereo realists here, right? Uh -huh. Do you see those? Oh no, I didn't see those. No, this one's different. It's a oh. stereo colorist by TDC, which is worse. Yeah, I forget who that was made by. Yeah, it's probably a rare one actually. We have one list right now though. It's kinda odd. This yeah. is the one I just fixed the lugs on. This one also has a lug problem. Just weak lugs. You said those are all pretty good. Yep. Should be 150 or whatever. Same thing as this realist. That's a Volcar. Oh, so I was just looking at there. Ooh, yeah. smells, something smells moldy there. Yeah. Got the realist. Ooh, that's cool. Made in USA. This is actually made in uh where is that? Michigan. What's the say Detroit. This is made in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. That's its claim to fame. That's actually really cool. It's worth some pretty good money. It's a rare. All right. Anything else you want on this? I'm, ooh. Snake, yeah. Smelling the mold. Feeling the mold. Well, it must be because you opened that one. No, nah, I think it's the Volcar back there. Well, either way. Okay. Point my nose at it. What about this Kona or Ko Kona? Kawa Kawa Kawa? Yeah. Yeah. Top find down there is off of Graflex, which is kind of weird. But, Those yeah. can be all right. Should be pretty good. Look at that leatherette on there. That needs a little bit of a repair job. It's like coming off there and there and everything. All right, so uh, scale of one to ten, what do you think? Mm, six, a little bit less. Really? I mean, there's some good pieces here, but some of it's moldy and some of it's a little bit different. Right. All right, we're gonna work on this. Yep. Well, I think I pulled out about four or five cameras, and Wheeler wants the rest. Uh, he pulled some lenses off. We're gonna tote those up separately, and whatever else. So I put a few things aside over here. You know, it's about what I expected. I didn't, I didn't expect any different. So I am going to lot this up uh, in the totes that I already have below here, and then I'm going to do that two more times. I think tonight is the goal. And then when you're handling all this stuff, a lot of this stuff is reasonably clean. But Wheeler said he smells the mold down here real bad. Maybe I'm in it. He's real sensitive certain times. I don't feel it too bad right now, but one thing I will do is take a real good shower after this, and uh, you don't want to bring this stuff with you. Some some of this, the average age of these pieces and how long they've been out of use is like, out of use probably average of 20 years, and uh, age, you know, average age, 40 years old, something like that old goodies and of course cameras have oils and things on them they also of course have dust and photographic chemicals and things like that and then the cases and things like that certainly you've got some must and mold and and weird stuff and uh, a lot of people handling them so it's a wonder we're so healthy <laughs> we're, we're in a funky uh, funky deal for that so all those vitamins pay off. Well, at this point, I uh, can't really get over to my area to start uploading this. I'm going to have to joggle some stuff around. But I'm going to do this tonight. Tomorrow's another day. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate you watching. If I don't say that enough, I mean it. And I don't know what else. <laughs> We're approaching 5,000 subscribers, so thank you all for that. 5,000 seems like a cool number. Um, maybe someday it'll be 6,000. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, pick well, list off in, dealer out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer production. <laughs>